Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video of the week where we're looking at helping you get into the top 5% globally. It's the series where I give you several options, you follow my instructions and the goal is finish top 5% and everything's good. Which should be enough to do well in your mini leagues, possibly even win your mini league if there's about 20 people in it or fewer. So this week there are lots of transfers that we could be making and it gets quite complicated. It took me hours to put all this together. Hopefully I've made it simple enough to understand. You may want to rewind parts of it and rewatch it before you actually make your transfers just so you don't get something wrong. So let's look into it and sorry if it goes on a little bit this week. I thought I'd start by talking about a comment left by Navinda Baburma. Baburum? I hope I got that right. I'm sorry if I didn't. About Matoma. So Matoma, since game week 17, has scored 2, 7, 8 and 6. He's an incredibly good player. He could easily be getting returns most weeks between now and the end of the season. So he's somebody who would be very nice to have in our team. But I didn't want to make any transfers last week because I wanted to save up so we'd have two this week because I knew this would be an expensive week for transfers. And Navinda wrote, I'm itching to get Matoma into my team, but can't decide whether it would be for Salah, Almron or Mount. We'll take your advice for no transfers this week and do a double next week. Hopefully one of the three above suspects will have a shocker and make the decision easier. Also, do you think it's worth swapping Saliba for Ben White? So I said Saliba to Ben White's a bit sideways, but does release cash. As it happens, uh, Saliba scored more than Ben White last week, so it probably wouldn't have been worth it. However, I went on to say, if we end up going for Matoma, then we may have money to spare. There are always good players that we want but don't have. We just need to be careful not to get rid of someone who's worth keeping. So the issue here is, you'll be familiar with the expression, probably the grass is greener on the other side. You've got a squad of 15 players. There will always be players that you would like to have. And you think, oh, they're going to do better than these players I've got. And sometimes they will do better. But if you got those in there'd be another player that you really, really want. And so the goal is to try and have 15 players or at least 11 that aren't duffers, that are going to do all right. And if we can manage that, we should finish in the top 5%. I then went on to explain about the double game week. We've got a double game week this week. And double game weeks make a huge difference. We've also got a blank game week in 25. At the time of recording, it's very likely that Newcastle, Brighton... Man United and Brentford are all going to blank in game week 25. And a lot of us are going to have more than three players from those four clubs put together. So we've got to be really careful. If we're going to bring in Man United or Brighton players, we need to be aware they're probably going to be blanking. That said, we are going to be bringing Man United players this week. And then Matoma, last game week, scored 10 points. And Navinda wrote, after the event, Matoma, crying icon. Uh, so, uh, then I just went on to say, look, we, we just can't have all the players we want. He is a good player. We'd try and bring him in, but we've only got 11 players. Another comment, this is from Zaka, who's gone from 3 million to 1.8 million rank since following me the last few weeks. He very kindly wrote, already reached 1.2 million above since following Midnight Mule. Good shit. So I thought that was a nice thing to write. So, on to game week 21. How did we do? Well, the bankers. We all have Ward, Bueno, Andreas, Trippier and Haaland. The first three all started on our bench. Trippier scored 8, Haaland 17, but Haaland was the captain, so he got 34 points. The bankers got 42 points in total. Our goalkeeper, we would have had one of Edison, Pope, Ramsdale or Kepper. They scored 6, 6, 1, 9 which was an average of 5.5, so we're happy with that. We would have had three of these defenders. James, Akanji, Stones, Gabriel, Shaw, Luca Dean, Dallow, White, Castagno. And they scored the ones that were playing 6, 8, 1, 0, 0, 1, which is an average of 8, which for three defenders really isn't very good. So we're not too happy with that. But other managers would have also had the same issue. People who went heavy on Newcastle defence the last few weeks have done very well. But it's just one of those things. They've got some difficult games coming up. So I'm not planning to get in Newcastle defenders the next few weeks because it won't be worth it. 
would have had one of these midfielders, Salah, De Bruyne, Son or Fernandes. Salah continues to be very disappointing with three. De Bruyne got six. Son got five. Son also got a couple of goals in the FA Cup since this game week. And it looks like Son may be coming back and starting to be good, perhaps. And Fernandes got five. That's an average of 4.8. Not very good. You would have had one of these midfielders, Foden, Saka, Mount, Trossard. Trossard was Brighton. He's now moved to Arsenal. I'll come to that shortly. And they scored 9, 3 and 1, which is an average of 4.3. Not very happy with that. You would have had one of these midfielders, Barnes, Martinelli, Rashford, Odegaard, Ormeron. They scored 7, 2, 7, 5, 3, average of 4.8. Still a little bit below what we want to be going for. You would have had one of these forwards, Kane, Darwin, Tony, 6, 1, 1. So that's a little bit disappointing as well. Average of 2.7. Very disappointing. You would have had one of Mitrovic, Martial, Solanke. Of those, only Mitrovic actually played. So that was an average of 2. So for a lot of our teams, one or more people would have come off the bench. These were the bench players and they scored 3, 2 and 1. So again, not great. But having worked all that out, the global average officially was 59 points. The worst you would have done had you followed the system is score 48. The average would have been 76 or a little bit more. I've said a little bit more, depends on which um, bench players came on. The maximum was just under 100 points. And I spot checked, or rather I thoroughly checked, all the teams I know that are following me. And this is roughly in line with what happened. So hopefully some of you had green arrows. I'm aware of at least one, maybe two, that got a red arrow this week. But don't worry, we're going to make big changes to our team. 472 subscribers on this channel. Thank you very much. If you like this sort of thing, subscribing and comments and liking, it's all very good. Thank you. Game 22 week transfers. Trossard. He was at Brighton. He's now moved to Arsenal. Trossard is an excellent player. We don't yet know how many minutes he's going to get. He plays on the left wing, which is where Martinelli plays. And if Smithrow starts getting more minutes, there's the three of them for the one position. It may be Martinelli get moved either to the middle or further up top. Trossard is absolutely excellent. And if he ends up getting 60 minutes or more every week, he's probably going to be worth having. But at the moment, we don't know what his time is going to be. So he is a prime candidate to potentially sell. Also, you may be forced to sell him because he's moved club. If we look at Celebrating Victory, which is the team of Sarah Jane B, who's somebody who's been doing this all season. This is their current starting 11 from last week. They have Ramsdale, Gabriel, Martinelli and Trossard. They now have four Arsenal players. Now, if they can keep hold of these four until next game week, game week 23, these four all have a double game week, that might be quite interesting. But I suspect when Sarah Jane makes um, transfers this week, she'd be forced to sell one of these. And that's probably going to have to be Trossard. But we'll see. If, if you're watching this, Sarah Jane, and you are making transfers, and you'd like to keep hold of Trossard, and it works for you, and it lets you, then do that. But I suspect you're going to be forced to sell him. Game week 22 transfers. Man United have got two easy home fixtures against Palace and Leeds, I think it is. So ideally, the three United players we want in our teams are Rashford, Fernandes and Shaw. So I want to bring those in if we haven't got them. There are two other Man United players in this system. That's Della and Martial. We want to get rid of those. So most of us are going to be making transfers this week. So I'm going to look at how we're going to do that. There are five potential transfers I'm suggesting. You can make any number of these. If you want to do all five and take a minus 12, I think that's okay. I think over the next two or three weeks, the changes you make would be worth more than 12 points. So don't worry about taking a hit. Certainly doing three and taking a minus four isn't a problem at all. Don't do transfers for the sake of it. Don't weaken your squad. Don't do any of these moves if you don't want to. But I think these are all okay to make. So the first job is getting in Fernandez. So you've all got Salah, De Bruyne, Son or Fernandez. I'm suggesting if you don't have Fernandez, you sell one of those other three and bring him in. Now I'm aware De Bruyne has got a double game week next game week, but we can bring in someone else for that if we're short of players. So over the game week 22 and 23 combined, I'm expecting Fernandez to outscore De Bruyne. 
and certainly outscore the other two as well, Salah and Son. That's probably what's going to happen. So I'm suggesting it's worth moving those three on to Fernandez. But you don't have to. It's up to you. But I would if it was me. We also want to bring in Luke Shaw. So I'm going to show you five defenders here. And one of these you should be getting rid of to bring in Luke Shaw if you don't already have them. The first one, the ones at the top are the ones I think are the best ones to get rid of to bring in Shaw. And as we go down, they're less good. So if you have Dallow, I suggest swapping him for Shaw. If you don't have Dallow but Luca Dean, do that move. Otherwise, Castagna, then James, then Stones. James is just coming back from injury and he may well start playing. So it would be good to keep hold of James if you can. Stones has got a, a hamstring injury, but we don't know how serious it is. And we don't know yet that he's not playing. So if by the time you get to do all these transfers, you know that Stones is out for longer, then obviously get rid of him. Um, and it would be better to have Shaw than any of these on the left. Uh, but Dallow and Dignan Castagna you should be getting rid of before the other two. Rashford, we want to bring him in if we can. So for that, you want to get rid of Foden, Omron, Mount, Trossard or Barnes. That would be my preferred order of moving them on. Obviously, it depends on might depend slightly on the money and also personally what you like doing and which of these players you actually have. You don't have to bring in Rashford, but I really think you should. Now, Eriksson is injured. He's going to be out to the end of April, which is probably going to affect the amount of points that Rashford's going to get and to a lesser extent, Fernandes and Shaw. But it's still worth bringing these three players in. Now, something to keep in mind, if you can afford to do this, you may prefer to instead sell Bailey, Billing or Somerville. But there's a major downside to this, and that is you're going to have benching headaches probably every week. And by that, I mean there's going to be somebody on your bench who we don't want on your bench, and they have a good chance of getting good points. However, if you want to keep hold of the other players I suggested, you could sell one of these if you can afford to. But don't do any of these moves till you finish looking at the other transfers I'm suggesting, because that might affect what you do with the money. Transfer number four. If you have Marcelo Solanke, get rid of them. Now's the time to get rid of them. Get in Enketia, who's got a double game next week, or Nonto, who's got a double game week this week. Enketia will almost certainly score more points the next couple of weeks than Nonto, but he is 1.7 million more. If it was me and I could afford it, I would get Enketia, but Nonto's perfectly good. Double game week, he could get something. But definitely move on Marshall and Solanke. Transfer number five. I'm suggesting you choose one of these midfielders again, Foden, Almron, Mount, Trossard and Barnes. This is only if you want to. Move them on for either Matoma or Rodrigo. Matoma is very likely going to blank in game week 25, which means he's not playing. There's a good chance he's going to blank a few game weeks later as well, assuming they get through the FA Cup. Rodrigo's not blanking in game week 25, and he's got a double game week this week. So Rodrigo may well outscore Matoma by the time we get to game week 26, but he might not. Matoma's cheaper. And he seems to be doing very well. And he's an excellent player. And Matoma's probably going to get more minutes than Rodrigo, especially now that Bamford's back. So this is a completely optional transfer. It's up to you. But any of those on the left are probably worth swapping for either of those two on the right. And you're going to get back more than four points in the next few weeks. And as before, if you prefer, you could swap out Bailey, Billing or Somerville for Matoma or Rodrigo. So that's it. They're the five transfers I'm suggesting you do. You can absolutely make two of these guilt-free. Three of these for a minus four is still absolutely fine. I would be happy making four or five of these. There's nothing wrong with making lots of transfers. If you take a view of about four game weeks, will I make the points back? And if you watch my other videos where I talk about my team, you'll often see I do take hits and then I work out afterwards whether or not it was worth it. But in this case, I think it's worth it. So bench, this is now more complex because I've let you potentially sell some of the bench sitters. It gets more difficult. So if we look at who's on the bench, then the other 11 players sort themselves out. So we want Ward on the bench and then positions 3 two, one So three is the one on the right. If you, have, if you still have Billing, you put him on your bench. 
And then next on your bench is Breno, Andreas, Mitrovic, Barnes, Somerville and Bailey. I'm aware Somerville's got a double game week, but he may only get a few minutes in both games. He may just play in one of them or none at all. You would only have to put Mitrovic on your bench if you got rid of certain other players, but that's what I was saying about a benching headache. Mitrovic can score against anyone and suddenly he's sitting on your bench potentially. Barnes is very good. Here's your way to Villa. He could score. Bailey's playing against Leicester and they're at home. Bailey could score. So Bailey, Barnes, Mitrovic and Andreas have all got a good chance of getting returns this week. So that's why it's a real danger having a lot of very good players when you might rather have less money on your bench. But it's up to you. Now, it's possible that you've only got two of these three players, which means you've got to put somebody else on your bench. So the next slide, I'm going to name some teams. And the first team that you have an outfield player on, you have to put them on your bench in your number one spot. So if you have a Tottenham player, which means Kane or Son, if you didn't do that transfer, they're going to have to sit on your bench this week. If you have a Villa player, which I think is going to be Luca Dean, which means you had Della as well, he's on your bench. Man City player, other than Haaland, they'd be next on your bench. Leicester player, which I think would be Barnes or Castagne, they'd be on your bench. Liverpool player, suddenly you have to put Darwin or Seller on your bench. A Newcastle player, that's going to have to be Trippier probably, or Olmeron. So put Olmeron out of those two if you've got them. Chelsea player, which would probably be Mount or James. Arsenal player, you've got loads of good Arsenal players. And last of all, Brentford player, if you've got Tony. If you're having to put one of these players on your bench, then it probably means maybe it wasn't making all those transfers you made because you're benching a good player. But I'm just putting this out there because it might be worth it for you. So regarding captain, if you've got Rashford, hopefully you have, but you may have decided not to get him, then make him your captain this week. If you don't have him but you have Fernandez, make him your captain. If you have neither of those but you have Shaw, make sure you're captain. If you have two of these, then the first one on the list is your captain and the second one should be your vice captain. And hopefully all of you will have at least one of these players for sure. This is a very good week to play your triple captain chip if you haven't done so already, but you don't have to. So if Rashford's your captain, triple captain him if you want to. If you're unsure, toss a coin. There will be other opportunities this season to play your triple captain. And of all the chips, I think triple captain is the least useful. So don't feel bad if you use it this week and it goes bad. Personally, I'm probably going to be triple captaining this week. If you only have one of these players, then your vice captain should be Haaland. And it's not very often we're going to be saying that. So I'm sorry that was such a long video and it may have been a wee bit complex, but there was a lot to get through. Hopefully it made sense. Hopefully you'll reap the rewards for making all those subs. And thank you very much for watching and get ready for game week 23 where it's another game week and I'm going to have to do a lot more jiggery pokery. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>